everyone, and welcome to another edition of Infield Fly. Talk of baseball with you this week. Recapping the last week in Major League Baseball and looking ahead to see what's going on this week in Major League Baseball. I'm Rob Fisher, fan of the hottest team in baseball. Well, not they're not the hottest team anymore, but they're pretty still high. pretty good. Yeah, Cardinals, uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Go Cardinals, big series with the Reds. Thus, you see my Cardinals-Reds mm. matchup jerseys behind me here today. Uh, Lang Whitaker is here. He's an Atlanta Braves fan. Went and saw the Braves this week. I How did are you, twice. Uh, twice. Doing well. You went with me once. Uh, yeah, doing good. Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> and Keith Murphy is with us. He's a Chicago Cubs fan. Hello, Murph. How are you? Not too good. We're talking oh, about Oh, come that. on, Murph. You're all right. You're no, good. No, not, not good, man. Not good. I'm, I'm ready to. I'm ready to pull that cord, man. It's happening. Yes. Cardinals have caught you uh, in the National League Central, but we'll uh, we'll get more into that. Um, the Cardinals, for how bad they were, are five games out and uh, in third place now in the National League Central because the National League Central is awful. But that's all right. That means the Cubs are right there. They're yeah. still I right mean, there. It's, it's, it's that awful fish. Yeah, it, it, really, it really is. It really is. So congratulations to whoever wins that division. Just got to get hot. That's all. Yep. It'll be fun. <laughs> Back to Good getting strategy. <laughs> A uh, few things I learned this week. Uh, Mookie Betts of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Dodgers were in Milwaukee last week, uh, and Mookie wouldn't stay at the Fister Hotel. Uh, he decided that he would stay at an Airbnb. Because what hotel? The, the Fister. <laughs> Why yeah. would he stay there? He stayed at an Airbnb? Yeah, because it's haunted. Hmm. We stay there for the Grizzlies. Well, we used to stay there. and uh, Even though it's haunted? Even though it's haunted, if you Google haunted or if you Google the Fister, and that's with a P, it's P F I S T E R. Yes. Looking it it's up, not, right it's now. not, it's not the F, ladies and gentlemen. I S T F I S T E R. Okay. Hotel. Look, look up a uh, Joey Lawrence. Look, up, that's the best ghost story the actor? from the Fister. Is yeah, yes. it's Joey Lawrence. Yeah, see if you can look right. that up. Uh, but there are a lot of athletes through the years that would not stay at the Fister because they were Derek Rose used to stay with a roommate when they were on the road because he were they were scared of staying at the Fister. I thought the uh, Oklahoma City has a haunted one, too. The Skirvin. Yeah, the yeah. Skirvin Hotel in Oklahoma City is also haunted. Yeah. But Mookie Betts decided to stay in an Airbnb because he doesn't want to stay at the haunted hotel in Milwaukee. Did you find oh. Joey Lawrence? I see links to it. I don't really cared enough about reading it. Um, but I apparently he talks about it on biographies, celebrity ghost stories. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't know that, uh, but I didn't know, like, I I'm curious what, like, um, Airbnb he stayed at. Do we have, like, pictures or, like, did he buy, like, to get, like, I don't a know. really expensive one? Like, that's curious. I would imagine it was probably an expensive one. Um, but I don't, I don't know exactly. But uh, he's the latest of athletes who are scared to stay at the Fister. They, they need to do a list of athletes that have, like, I found, I did find that uh, G-Man Choi, uh, when he was on the Angels, stayed at that hotel and, and said it was haunted and he wasn't able to sleep well. Wow. Yeah. The only thing that ever happened to see, I'm upset because we stayed at two haunted hotels and nothing, nothing ever happened. Uh, I, I was looking forward to something happening. Uh, but at the Fister, uh, I went, uh, my, it, it was weird. My, ho uh, my hotel room was like on the ninth floor mm -hmm. and the hotel went up to six opened up and there was nobody there. And nobody got on nothing. Then my hotel went up a little bit and then it went back down to six opened up. Nobody was there. Then it went all the way downstairs and I'm still on there trying to get to nine. And then it went back up, stopped on six again. Nobody there. Okay. Then, it's haunted. It's haunted. Then, fi then finally went to my room. So went, went to six, I mean, three, three times. It's I mean, be then haunted. went straight to my room. Haunted, right? Haunted. Yeah. Six, six, six. I mean, yeah. if an elevator is going up and down and not doing what you wanted to do, means it's haunted, then this elevator in the Grizzlies <laughs> office has been haunted for six years. FedEx forums been yeah. haunted. I've been forever. stuck in this elevator three times. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. So I don't there believe you, in there ghosts. you go. There's my haunted, haunted story. I don't think it's, I don't think it's possible. Well, well, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, at the Skirvin, they say that, uh, uh, that there's, there's a female ghost yeah. at the Skirvin in Oklahoma city and that she assaults men in the shower. Wow. I never, thought it was a, never, never has happened to me. I thought it was that there was a, uh, like a baby that cries or yes, something. there's a baby that cries as well. 
one of the great as well <laughs> one of the yeah there's a baby because she jumped out the window she, old man skirvin was keeping this woman like uh, on the 10th floor sure and, and locked in the room and everything because he got her pregnant and she jumped to her death with the baby mm. all right so the baby so the and, woman the woman, and the baby are the they yes. haunt you yeah. yeah uh and it's one of the great stories we were in oklahoma city one year and we were staying at that hotel and we had i don't know if you remember len Carey harper mm -hmm. uh, who used to work with the grizzlies uh it was her and um gosh she was the other one there were two two females i can't remember who the other one was but they were both staying in a room and we put a phone outside the room that had the noise of a baby crying mm -hmm. and of a doorbell and they started freaking out thinking it was us <laughs> and i ran up to my room and i was above them they're like where are you at and i was like i'm in my room and they said well what room are you in i said i'm directly above you and i knocked on the floor so they could yeah. hear that i was in the room above them and they freaked out they called hotel security and uh everything because they heard this baby crying and they heard doorbells and there are no doorbells uh at these hotel rooms and uh michael wallace our friend was staying across the hall from them and actually told them yeah i heard it too so they freaked out and they thought the hotel was haunted and to this day they still don't know that it was us michael wallace doesn't know that it was us either he thinks it's kind of haunted too so <laughs> listen, does. listen that's a great practical joke that is that's very funny thank you and i and i would have to square up me and you would have been fighting. <laughs> we'd go me and you would have been fighting after that that's that's crazy all right there you go our ghost stories for uh for the week uh, a couple of other things learned this week. The only, how about this? The only player, there's only one player that has more home runs uh, than Aaron Judge since Judge made his debut in 2016. He's got 232. Who is the only player in baseball since 2016 that has more home runs than Aaron Judge? Juan Soto. Hell no. <laughs> uh, since 2016, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna think there's some sort of a. Uh, bias to this and i'm gonna say goldschmidt oh you're close because <laughs> mm. there is a bias to it yes yeah. nolan arenado mm. wow mm. since the beginning time. of 2016 arenado's got 238 judge has 232 how about that mm. arenado with more home runs than aaron judge would not have picked that yeah yeah would not have yeah. thought that the last guy would have picked actually yeah uh also uh there are seven national league teams uh the number was five uh on monday but now it's seven seven national league teams over 500 all the american league east teams are over 500 yeah so how about that there you go national that's, a, that's a tough division yeah you think that's you're last really, place really and you're over division. 500 yeah and all of like, all of them think boy if i was just only in the national league central oh great i mean things you got there. mets fans just 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 going crazy because they're like on a three, four game winning streak. Oh, yeah. so, that, so that just tells you how close that whole, you know, division is. The Mets are packed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the pitcher power rankings. Top five pitchers in Major League Baseball, according to MLB.com. Zach Gallen is number one of the Arizona Diamondbacks, despite the fact he just got rocked. And he killed a bird the other day. And he killed a bird, yeah. Number two is Spencer Strider. Mm -hmm. Number three, Sonny Gray of the Twins, Garrett Cole of the Yankees four, and Eduardo Rodriguez of the Detroit Tigers is number five. Huh. How about that? Cy Young Award candidates. Here are the rankings as of today. In the American League, Cole, number one. Shane McClanahan of the Rays, number two. He's 7-0 and on the year. Sonny Gray, third. Shohei Otani, fourth. And Joe Ryan, fifth. In the National League, you got Zach Gallen, one, Spencer Strider, two, Clayton Kershaw is number three, although he's lost his last two starts. Mitch Keller of the Pirates at number four, and at number five, Justin Steele of the Chicago Cubs. He's been How about dead. that, Murph? I mean, he's been he dealt the last game he had, and they wasted that opportunity for him, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Uh, also, Angel Hernandez. You all familiar with Angel Hernandez? Of course we are. Worst umpire in baseball. Yeah. Um, yeah. He apparently has only worked one game this year. That was back on April 3rd. Mm. And uh, so so there was some reporting done this week to find out what what has happened to Angel. Uh, he, has a, he has a back injury. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say it has to be a medical ailment. <laughs> but is expected to return. So do not fret. Because if there's any umpire who's going to love the pitch clock, oh. it's Angel well, Hernandez. He, he's going to love enforcing it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No doubt. 
Uh, some of the top stories this week, Trevor Bauer was sent down to the minor leagues in Japan. Boy, Jeez. how's that feel? I didn't know they had minor leagues in Japan. I, I didn't either. No, I don't think he knew either. Uh, but three starts in 840 ERA. He's down now in the minors, the Japan minor leagues. So good luck. It's, to the, him. it's, it's not it's not the Japanese big league. It's the no. Japanese minor league. Correct. Yeah. But that's just a whole nother level. Yes. That's that's, that's just, where Trevor Bauer is. Yeah. Jesus. Ray's owner Stuart Sternberg says he has no plans to sell the team. He's committed to securing a new and ho new home and long-term future in Tampa Bay. Tampa's lease at Tropicana Field is set to expire following 2027. Sternberg and the Rays are hoping to build a new 30,000 seat stadium on the same site. So Rays aren't moving. Although I don't know how much I can take this guy for his word, considering they were ready to play half their games in Montreal. I know. Also, a 30,000-seat stadium on the same site would mean you probably wouldn't be able to play for a couple of years in Tampa Bay if you're building on – if you have to tear down the other stadium. So You would think so. Yeah, so Montreal yeah. maybe for a year. Do you think people don't go to the games because of the site of the stadium or because of the stadium itself? Like if you build a brand-new stadium on the same place, I I don't know. I, 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 well, the Marlins, it didn't – the yeah, new stadium really didn't make a difference for them. And their Although stadium's you, bright and you, shiny. You and would beautiful. argue like, hey, just win games, people will come. But they do that, and nobody comes. I just, so. I yeah. just don't think that Florida is a, is, a, is, a, is a baseball, major league baseball state. It's, it's a, it's, it's a spring weird. training state. Yeah, yeah. It's a pre, but it just seems like fans don't really, it's like, it, it, even when the Marlins were like winning, winning championships, it just seems like it was always like lukewarm, you know? Yeah, because the problem is the, the the majority of people who live in Florida aren't from Florida. Yeah, yeah. You got people in Florida who are fans of teams all over the country, and now all of a sudden you bring a team there, and it's it's not really that big of a deal. Um, and and they've been a spring training state for so long that fans kind of become fans of those teams that are there yeah. for spring training. Yeah. So, yeah, I, a lot of Yankees fans <laughs> in Florida. So. Yeah, a lot of Cubs. Unless games, the Yankees so. moved there, Cubs moved uh, there, or, or Cardinals moved there. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. Like Chinese. Orlando wanting an expansion team. I don't think that's a really. The only thing about Orlando, like I, I would assume it's like Vegas. Like you'll get a lot of tourists there, and like you know, you're there for to go to Disney World for the week, and you got a night off, and you want to do something different. Maybe you take four your kids out to the baseball game or whatever. Yeah, but how many people is that? Orlando gets a lot of tourists, but I don't know. Yeah, I think I think you tend to, to take them to like the small market, like minor league teams, because they seem like more fun, you know. Yeah. Take your kids to those type of things. Like, I, I don't know. It just seems weird, weird to me. It's all, all a baseball team in Florida has always seemed kind of like, you know, weird for me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the A's, meanwhile, they've reached a new deal on a stadium site at the Tropicana oh, in nice. Las Vegas. Interesting. Yeah. Nice little small stadium there for them. So that'll be good. All right, let's check out our teams. The Atlanta Braves this week won two or three against Texas, won two or three against Seattle. Uh, tied an MLB record against the Rangers on Monday with five two-run homers, becoming the 12th team to do it, first since the 2019 A's. Uh, Ronnie Acuna, ninth, 10th, 11th home runs. Ozuna hit his eighth. Murphy hit his 10th. Morton, Charlie Morton, 10 strikeouts. Uncle Charlie racked up 20. How about this? Racked up 20 swinging strikes with curveballs in the game. That's the most curveball whiffs by a pitcher in any MLB game in the last 10 years. Mm. Uncle Charlie. Man how, old still, is, how, how old is Morton now, Fish? Uh, he's He's got to be 40-something. I, I mean, late 30s at least. Got to be close. I, I yeah. think I, I, last time I, I think we had this conversation, he was like 30. 39. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Uh, and then winning two or three against Seattle, Olsen hit his 12th and 13th homer. Bryce Elder outdueled Bryce Miller yeah. in the first series win over Seattle in 12 years. You were at that Elder Miller battle of the Bryce. Bryce. Yeah, yeah. That was a good game. It was one to one for a long time. And they were actually, um, uh, 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 Bryce Miller was great. He was dealing, um, and, uh, went, went to the late innings and, uh, guess who got the big hit for the Braves? Marcelo Zuna. Marcelo Zuna. <laughs> Mr. Clutch. <laughs> That's right. So you're going to stop talking trash about that cat? Listen to this stat. I brought this up to bring this up. In April and March, Ozuna was uh, 
five for 59. He had two hits uh, that were home runs. Two of the five hits were home runs. 18 strikeouts. Jeez. In so far in May, he's 17 for 51 for a 333 batting average, six home runs, 15 RBIs, and just 11 strikeouts. So what are they, Lang? What are they saying has changed his batting approach? What is it? What is it? I don't know. I mean, it watching him like he he's always you know a. a smarter player i think that he got credit for it like he's good at working strike zones and stuff but they they were the main thing they talked about on the, on the broadcast is like he's not trying to just pull everything he's trying to mm. go the other way and it's kind of opened him up a little bit i guess but he's been great we just need oh. some pitching we got to get rid of these uh bullpen games we've had so many bullpen games uh hopefully elder cements himself there they they called up a rookie yesterday schuster he got the start was really good so maybe maybe he'll get some of those starts but they they need some starting pitchers because it's starting to wear on the bullpen what what do you what what do you think of the games what do you think of the uh, watching seattle play obviously a team you don't yeah. see very often they were fine it was uh it was fun to go with my son um somebody on I posted a photo and somebody was like, wow, you had pretty good seats. And I was like, yeah, you know, when you only go once a year, it's a little easier to like splurge on the good seats. So <laughs> yeah, we sat down behind the plate, like 20 rows up, but uh, it was a lot of fun. It was star Wars night. It just oh, happened wow. to be star Wars night. Okay. So we uh, got our picture taken with the Mandalorian and Grogu before the game. And then uh, it was also fireworks night. So, mm. uh, and that park is like, they've done a really good job of making it like a destination for families and stuff. Like, uh, in the outfield, they have all these kids things. They have like a, a rock wall you can climb and a zip line and they have a uh, batting cage and a thing where you, you know, pitch the ball and it does your uh, miles per hour and like all these things. So like we got there early and went to the gift shop and then went out to the outfield and my son did all that stuff for like an hour. Um, and it, it's fun. Like it's like a whole, you know, it's a fun experience for a family. It's so, I told my son, I was like, I feel like I'm at Disney World. Like it's expensive too. But you feel like you're at Disney World and they have all these things to distract you and the food of the game and, you know, all this stuff. It was fun. I'm trying to go back Friday night this week because it's Outcast night. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. And somebody has uh, somebody's offered me a ticket. Uh, they're giving away a bobblehead of uh, Dre and Big Boy in a, um, a Cadillac. Um, oh, I, yeah, I would I would go just for that. So I think I'm going to try and go get that. <laughs> Very nice. You didn't see J-Rod do anything. He, I saw him strike he's, out. He, yeah, he's slumping a little bit. Right yeah. Now. Yeah, I saw him think, strike you, out. You think fall they down. figured him figured him out, fish? You think the pitchers are kind of sophomore slump? Oh, I mean, yeah. it's bad to have a sophomore slump when you sign the contract that he signed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Michael Harris is having a sophomore slump for the Braves. Yeah, yeah you know, the rookie right. of the year last year. He's he hasn't been great. Um, but uh, I, I, the, the woman in front of me turned around and she was like, she was like when he struck out one time and I was like, I don't know. Like she thought, like she thought I was part of like the coaching staff or something. I don't, I don't <laughs> and we got to go see the Braves uh, prospects play this week. Cause the, uh, the Cardinals played the Braves triple a team here in Memphis on Wednesday was last week. And yep. I uh, bought front row tickets for 20 bucks a piece and uh, went to that game. It was fun. Yeah. Front row Murph. We, we, we were, we had the Euchre seats. It was great. Wow, man! Look at y'all. Just for twenty-two. That's that's a that's a yeah, bargain. Yeah, yeah, we saw I Mason guess. Mason Wynn. Is that his name from the Cardinals? Mason Wynn of the Cardinal Jordan Walker, uh, whose birthday is today. Happy birthday, Jordan Walker. He's twenty. But I wanted to old. go see Mike Soroka was was starting for the Braves. Um, he you know, was great. A couple of years ago, he was a Cy Young candidate, Rookie of the Year candidate, and then he tore his Achilles twice, the same Achilles, uh, mm -hmm. and and has been kind of like battling his way back slowly for the last couple of years, and now he's up to AAA, and he looked great. When we saw him, like you could yeah. tell, you could tell. I was like, all right, this dude's a major league pitcher. Like, you think, you think he's going to get caught up soon, or what? I, I mean, we could use him right away. I don't know. Um, they yeah. also just called up the Braves' other like best prospects, a pitcher, AJ Smith Shoyer or something like that. And he just got called up to Triple A, so he pitched uh, Friday night here in Memphis and looked okay, apparently. So uh, they they got to figure out something though, because the pitching is the the big issue for the Braves at the moment. Braves a five game lead over the Mets, five and a half over the Marlins, who are in third place in the National yeah. League East. Meanwhile, the Cardinals have gone from last place in the Central up to third place in the Central, five games back because the rest of the division stinks. Cardinals are playing well, though. Cardinals won two or three against the Milwaukee. They won three or four against the Dodgers. That was a big series for the Cardinals. They've won 11 of their last 14 games. Jack Flaherty with a couple of great uh, outings. 
Matthew Liberator, the rookie, got called up, and he went five scoreless. They scored 18 in a rout of Milwaukee. They came back, scored 16 against the Dodgers. Arenado had a streak of homering in five straight games. Uh, he's been on fire for the Cardinals. Got his 1,000th RBI. List of thir third basemen since 1920 with 300 homers and 1,000 RBIs before playing in their 1,500th game include Eddie Matthews, Chipper Jones, and Nolan Arenado. Uh, active players with 300 homers and 1,000 RBIs include Miguel Cabrera, Joey Votto, Nelson Cruz, Evan Longoria, and Paul Goldschmidt. Is that uh, list there? Wondering who's in the Hall of Fame out of that list. Miggy's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. Miggy's definitely um, going to be in the Hall of Fame. Joey Votto? It's always been borderline. Yeah. Nelson Cruz, maybe? Maybe. I mean, his, his career stats are ridiculous. Evan Longoria? That's I don't, a, I, I don't know. I, I can see Cruz going in before it. Longoria. Yeah. Yeah. And then Paul Goldschmidt. Your boy. Still a, lot, still a lot to play, I guess, for Goldie and Arenado, both. Yeah. But, but their numbers are certainly on pace uh, to possibly get there. Uh, Cardinals won three of four against the Dodgers. Last time the Cardinals hit seven home runs in a home game, they were also playing the Dodgers. That happened on Thursday when they won 16 to eight. The last time it happened was May 7th, 1940 against the Brooklyn Dodgers. Nolan Gorman is on fire, hit his 11th, 12th, and 13th home runs of the season against the Dodgers. He's got 13 home runs. He's a platoon player. He leads the National League in RBIs. He's got 13 home runs, and he only plays against right-handers. Hmm. That's crazy. And the Cardinals were struggling offensively. Finally, this week, this week, this series against the Dodgers, they started Gorman against left-handed pitching. And, well, I mean, and he sounds went like, deep. Sounds like they're doing the right thing. They're in first place, right? Like Who? The, the Cardinals? Cardinals? I mean, the Cardinals yeah. are they're working their way back. They're hot right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're hot sure. right now. But you he needs they... to he needs to play every day. And they're starting to play him every day now. Because okay. it just didn't make a lot of sense. Orlando Mercado got called up by the Cardinals because of their injuries to the outfield. He had three starts, went three of four in two of them. Drove in five runs yesterday. <laughs> Steven Matz, a pitcher now 0-5 oh, on the season. That's not good. 0-5. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and following Sunday's loss at Bush Stadium, Max Muncy of the Dodgers, he was ejected in the game and got ticked off at the umpires. And he says that after the game, he said he thought the Cardinals catchers were bullying the home plate umpires throughout the series. Whoa. Secure favorable calls. Yeah. That's a charge. Quit crying, Muncie. Are you serious? Why do we have to throw all this crap at Wilson Contreras? Just let the guy catch. Bullies. Bullies. So the Cardinals are now bullies as well. Just so they're so so they're no longer talking about trading my man now, right? Like that's not happening anymore, right? They're not they're not trying to tr trade Contreras anymore. There's not hey. any and as talk we've, about that anymore. As the Cardinals have said from the beginning, he is the starting catcher, Murph. He is. I, I loved <laughs> that this week. So the Cardinals starters had an ERA of like 540, and then they took Contreras out from catching because they blamed it all on him. Mm -hmm. And the week that he wasn't catching, the ERA was like 570. <laughs> so now Contreras is back as the starting catcher, and since he's been back at the starting catcher, the ERA is like 280. And everybody's like, See, he learned it. He learned he he learned he learned how to catch in that last week. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. What's happened with the Cardinals? It's the Cardinal way. It's the Cardinal way. They've won eleven of their last fourteen. And the Chicago Cubs um, swept three games uh, at Houston uh, against the Astros, and then lost two or three at Philadelphia as well. Justin Steele got his first loss of the season to fall to six and one. Uh, led 6-1 in the eighth inning in the finale against Houston and lost 7-6. Ouch. Drew Smiley was great. Uh, didn't get a decision. Suzuki hit three home runs in the series. And then in the Philadelphia series, Marcus Stroman with a nice outing to get the win. Dansby Swanson's fourth home run. And Christopher Morrell, three home runs in the series as well. But Cubs have lost seven of their last eight, Murph. Yeah, it's, it's one of those instances where we're just wasting solid performances from like, Everybody from still tomorrow to, I mean, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, this, 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 this still <laughs> kid, the still kid comes up and he gives you four hits, six innings, 
His ERA just drops to like what, 2.20 or something like that. He's like the seventh best in the majors. And basically you're just giving up like two run homers to like, to like, you know, to, to break the back. Of and listen, it would have been two zip if it wasn't for more, you know, yeah. it's just, it's just, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you're wasting great play from this, especially this moral kid who just got caught up from uh triple a, like he's just on fire, man. Like what? 17 for 46. 11 games, eight home, home runs, 14 R RBIs, 15 runs. Like, I'm just, you know, I know all the Cubs fans want to see Ross gone. Yes, Ross is one of the reasons. It's just a little quote. I don't feel like we're far off, but we have to be better. No kidding. <laughs> like, what are, you, like is, what are you talking about? Yes, yes. But hmm. I don't think we can just totally blame David Ross either because we have a bullpen problem. I know I've been hitting this every, every, every show, but we, 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 we got to do something with this bullpen because it's just, you're just giving up too many backbreaking games. And most of these games have been close. There's been a few blowouts, but most of these games, games we've, uh, we've been losing, it's been like come from behind games that the teams have been coming after. So yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not a good situation. Yeah. Uh, and then the DFA Eric Cosmer. So are we blaming him? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I think I think they're going to try to blame. I think that listen, man. Anyone that they can blame right now besides Ross, because I think that's what's going on. They're, they're nobody. I, I I don't think management wants to lose Ross for some reason. Like he's like some like, you know, some piece where they're like, oh no, we can't we can't get rid of Ross. He just we, that'd be too much. Like I blame everybody else. So yeah, I, yeah. I guess they're blaming everybody else. Yeah. Uh, hey, want to remind you about a couple of big concerts coming uh, to FedEx Forum, Drake is opening this highly anticipated 2023 It's All a Blur Tour with 21 Savage and FedEx Forum. That's Thursday, June 29th. Tickets are on sale at Ticketmaster.com or the FedEx Forum box office. For more show information, visit FedExForum.com. And a Grammy Award-winning singer, songwriter, and performance artist, Alicia Keys, is bringing the keys to the summer tour to FedEx Forum. That's Wednesday, July 5th. Tickets on sale at Ticketmaster.com or the FedEx Forum box office. For show information, visit fedexforum.com and don't forget to download the brand new official grind city media mobile app explore new ways to access your favorite gcm content from your favorite shows and series to news and entertainment including this show right here stay connected with exclusive content at your fingertips with the new grind city media mobile app available on both the apple and google play stores all right uh going around the horn a little bit we'll start uh, in the american league the american league east is a beast Tampa Rays are in top at 34 and 14. Then you have Baltimore with the second best record in the league at 31 and 16. They're two and a half out. Yankees, five and a half out. Boston, seven and a half out. And the Blue Jays in last place, mm. eight and a half games out, despite the fact they're three games over 500. The Rays lost two or three at the Mets. They won two or three against Milwaukee. Shea McClanahan, another seven innings pitched and no runs, but didn't get a decision. Zach Eflin improved to six and one. The Rays have 10 different players with at least five home runs this season. They're the only team in history to have 10 different players with five home runs before playing 50 games of a season. They reached wow. that mark in just 43 games. Wow. <clears throat> that would mean they're pitching and they're hitting. Yeah. It's both been spectacular. Well, it has. They're awesome. I mean, they've, they've been they've been like a revelation, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't even know what to say. Like, did we have them early on in our show? Like, what 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 did we pick pick them for? You guys remember? Did we did we have them um, this high? just as as one of our favorite teams? Yeah, well, yeah. I was the one that pointed out that maybe we I shouldn't forget the, the Rays. Yes, you did. You did. Because I listen. I I, th I think I had them third, maybe if I can remember third in that division. Because we forget them every year. We just think, eh. Yeah, I, I did not have them. Because I had Baltimore second, and I had the Yankees first. I don't think we forget them. I mean, it's also, for, for Murph, for me and Fish, like one of our friends went to work for the Rays. So, like, the last couple of years now, we, I think they're probably higher in our consciousness than they had right. been previously. Right. Yeah. So. But I was still the one. Yeah, okay. you were. Yeah, I, I'll give you credit for that. <laughs> the Baltimore Orioles are second in the East. They split four against the Angels. Dean Kramer is now five and one on the year. They sweep three big series in Toronto, and they took all three games. The last two, they win in extra innings. They win all three against the Blue Jays. Ryan Mountcastle 
had a couple of home runs this week. He's got 10 now on the season. Yankees, meanwhile, they won three of four at Toronto as well. Oh, and what a game it was. What a series it was. Just a lot of drama and a lot of pettiness. And I love <laughs> pettiness when it comes to Major League Baseball. In one game, um, Herman got kicked out for a foreign substance again uh, on his glove, which is amazing because it was the exact same umpiring crew that wouldn't kick him out uh, about a month ago, despite him, they kept sending him to the dugout to wash his hands. Yeah. Uh, and this time they kick him out of the game. And then you had the Aaron judge peeking over to the first base coach because the blue Jays were tipping pitches and everybody got mad at that. So the blue Jays, the next night, the pitching coach is losing his mind from the mm. dugout screaming at the Yankees third base coach to stay in the coach's box. Mm. To stay in the coach's box. I didn't know we even had to stay in the coach's box. I thought there was just a line out there for just an idea for the coach's box. Cause nobody ever stands in it. So the blue Jays are yelling and then Boone gets upset. So the next inning, the blue Jays coach is outside the coach's box and Boone screaming at the umpire, get him back in the box, get him back in the box. And then uh, Schneider from the blue Jays, their manager looks over at Boone and says, shut up fat boy. And it was like, what is going on? <laughs> It was, he man. get kicked out. He got kicked out, right? When it, Booney got kicked, kicked out, and yeah, yeah. then Judge hit a bomb. Yeah. Um, it was fantastic stuff. It was fantastic pettiness, baseball. Why crap. would you call Boone Fat Boy? I don't know. I, I was like, he, of all he, the guys he, to be called fat, like that sounds right, like, nothing yeah, fat didn't. about him. He's yeah, not, he's not in. I, <laughs> I don't think was, we had the great. chance to talk about the the judge tipping pitches, the cheating. Like, yeah. What? Okay, so we're all in agreement that he was looking at them t t tipping their pitches like he was actually looking at in real time i don't think he time. was I, I think he was looking at and fish and i were talking about this the other day when we were at that game because one of the mlb tonight guys was talking about it but i i don't i i think he was looking at somebody in the yankees dugout who was like mm. telling him what was happening i think it was the first base coach well it was someone in the dugout or the first base coach yeah but but he clearly was tipping his pitches and he even oh, admitted no, the was. next <laughs> game that he was tipping his pitches so yeah, you can see it i i don't there, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I was that. about to say I don't, I don't, I don't find that nefarious in, in any way. Like if if you're throwing up, you know, signs, signs yeah. in, in the bullpen. I mean, in, in in the dugout, then come on. Flashing flashlights and stuff. Yeah, well, like, then maybe like, we got a problem. You got, you got one of those things, the airplanes, where you're like doing this. <laughs> like, come on, man. Hitting a trash can. There yeah, was yeah. The, there the was trash. so much made out of Aaron Judge's wandering eyes <laughs> that should have never been made of it. I mean, there, there was nothing. I mean, he, the, because if he if, if he was looking back to see where the catcher, there were two problems. One, the pitcher was tipping his pitches. Two, yeah. their catcher Kirk kept setting up so early before every pitch that you knew the location of the pitch before the guy even started his motion because he was setting up behind the plate. So it may have been a deal where the first base coach was giving you location of the catcher, or maybe he was given the pitch because the pitcher had tipped him off. Whatever the case, the Yankees did nothing wrong. Yeah. So I, I don't know why it was such a, the funny part was that he hit a home run on the play. Oh, you know, and he like, crushed it too. Yeah, like, and it was an off speed pitch. So he clearly was like waiting on the pitch and, yeah. and, you know, just was all over it. That, oh. that, that was what made it so – like, if he had done that and then, like, you know, just fouled it off or grounded out to third, then nobody says anything probably. But yeah. that he just drilled it, that made it so much worse. I thought it was pretty impressive that the Blue Jays broadcasters pointed it out. That yeah, they were able as it was to happening. Tell. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was interesting stuff. But then Judge was mad because the Blue Jays broadcasters were calling him cheater. Yeah. And – uh and then the Yankees were mad. And then the Blue Jays were mad at the coaches not being in the box. It, it was it was a great series. It, I mean, it was so much fun because I mean, there was the just so time, much hatred. First time in years that I would actually side with the Yankees. <laughs> right? That's how bad the situation is. Like, you're making me, like, become a Yankee apologist. Like, come on. Right. Uh, judge <laughs> home run Thursday against the Blue Jays was his 32nd career home run against Toronto. Broke a tie with Jorge Posada for the most by Yankee player against the Blue Jays all time. Judge, uh, that gave him 12 on the year. His 30th career multi-home run game, that broke a tie with Alex Rodriguez for fifth most in Yankees history. The only Yankees with more multi-home run games than Judge, Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Lou Gehrig, Joe DiMaggio. 
Yeah. Pretty good I'll, list. I'll first battles. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, Nasty Nestor improved to four and two. They did get uh, Severino back on the hill yesterday, who had a nice return. Judge hit his 13th on Saturday. Rizzo with a couple of home runs. Gosh, he looks so good. This, Murphy, uh, Yankee come on. Stripes, Fish, man. You he know just, that. Don't, don't even mention his name anymore. Man. He just does. He looks so this good. Yankee Jeez. legend. Two home, run, two home runs. He's got 11 on the year. Yankees also uh, DFA'd Aaron Hicks. So uh, yeah. we don't need to hear about how bad he is anymore. You know, he's, every he's, time Rizzo does something like that, I feel like like R.E.M. is going to come on in the background with everybody else. <laughs> everybody like, and it's just me, me in the shower just cowering and just crying. Just... The weird part about that uh, Aaron Hicks getting DFA'd is that he has three years left on that contract. Three Jeez. years and $30 million or something like that. So they just give they just given up on them, huh? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wow. Boston, uh, they won two or three against Seattle. Justin Turner hit his fourth and fifth home runs. And then they won two or three at San Diego as well. Raphael Devers hit a couple of home runs that gave him 13 on the year. Chris Sale, seven strong innings again. He's now four and two on the season. The Red Sox, five games over 500, seven and a half out. And then you have the mysterious Blue Jays. They lost three of four against the Yankees. The win, Chris Bassett was great against Garrett Cole. They won that one three nothing in extra innings, and then they were swept by three at home uh, against Baltimore. So that's losing six of seven at home against two of your big rivals. Uh, the Blue Jays. The reason why the Blue Jays are in last place in the American League East. Check this out. Blue Jays are twenty five and twenty two, but they're ten and seventeen against their own division. Mm. So they are fifteen and five outside the American League East and 10 and 17 against their own division. Mm. That won't, uh, that won't get it done for you. No American league central, the worst division in baseball. Um, who's in first place this week. It's the Minnesota twins. Uh, they are three games over 500. They have the same record as the blue Jays who are in last place in the East twins in first place in the central. Um, they lost, and, and this is how good the twins are. They lost two or three at the Dodgers and two or three at the angels. So they lost four of their six games this week. Although Bailey Ober, Bailey Ober is a pitcher and uh, he outdueled Clay, Clayton Kershaw. He's three and zero with an ERA under two. He's pitching tonight, by the way, if you want to get a little action in on uh, the Minnesota twins, Bailey Ober, uh, the pitcher tonight, Byron Buxton hit his ninth home run. Joey Gallo hit his 10th and Minnesota won a game or won a series in Dodger stadium for the first time since June of 2005. Detroit is in second place in that division. They split, and this is how good they are. They split two against Pittsburgh and lost two or three at Washington this week. Oh. Cleveland, they're in third place. They're they still a good. They, they, they're still a good story, though. Detroit. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Still a good story. I, I know what you're saying. Cleveland's still going <laughs> to win the division, right? I mean, uh because they got Francona. I mean, uh, feels maybe. like it. I don't. I don't know. They lost two or three at the White Sox, and then they were swept three in New York against the Mets. Yeah. Cleveland's yeah. 20 and 26. They're no good. Cleveland doesn't do much for me. That whole division does nothing for me. The White Sox. Yeah. How about this, Murph? Thursday marked. Okay, 162 games are in a baseball season, right? right. White Sox have gone 162 straight games starting a right handed pitcher. Wow. <laughs> How about That's that? Yeah. Haven't had one start by a left hander in the last year. That's crazy. That says something. <laughs> that is amazing that's a that's that's something in the organization man that the pitching coach i don't know what's going on that's nuts white Sox did sweep three games against kansas city lance lynn got his second straight win and uh luis roberts uh his 13th home run of the year he's having a heck of a season but the white Sox six and a half back and then the kansas city royals jordan lyles pitcher for the royals the royals have now lost jordan lyles first 10 starts this season he is 0 and 8. It's the first time they've lost a pitcher's 10 starts of a season in franchise history. Tim Anderson's hurt too for the White Sox, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, he's out as well. What's, what's, that, what's, what, what's the pitcher's ERA, Fish? That's, that's Who? lost 10 straight. The guy's lost 10 straight. Oh, I, uh, L- Lyles? Oh, yeah. Let's see. What's his name? Uh, Jordan Lyles. Are you looking that up for me? I, yeah. I got a feeling that dude's probably just not getting any run support. Oh God, Cause, no! Cause he's, can't, he's with the Royals. Because you can't keep losing like that, just being off. Uh, this season, I mean, he's been pitching for twelve seasons. He's zero and eight right now. Uh, started ten games, seven one five ERA. Ooh, yeah, that's that's. 
That might be him. <laughs> Keep him in the rotation. <laughs> How does a, that guy stay in a rotation? He's a winner. Oh. Oh, uh, one of the uh, more exciting uh, divisions in baseball is the American League West, led by the Texas Rangers, who are 29 and 17. They lost two or three against Atlanta. Yes. Uh, Adolis uh, Garcia, 11th, 12th, and 13th home run in that series. He's got up to 46 RBIs. Then they sweep three against Colorado. Garcia hit his 14th, and Martin Perez improved to 5-1 and one on the season. Texas now 12 games over 500. they They're ahead of the Astros by two games. They swept three against Chicago Cubs. They swept three against the Oakland A's. Jose Altuve made his return as well. Uh, Framber Valdez uh, had a complete game shutout. The Astros have won seven straight games. They are knocking on the door. I keep rooting for these angels and they're still there. Yeah. 25 and 23, five games back. I mean, the problem is right now though, with the way that the national league East or the American league East is, you almost have to win your division to make the playoffs right? because the wild cards are probably both coming out of the American league East Angels split four at Baltimore. Shohei pitched seven innings and reached base five times. <laughs> Including the ninth, uh, his ninth home run in a five-one win. Uh, then he hit his tenth in the finale. Mike Trout hit a couple of home runs. The Angels are two and zero when Trout and Otani homer in the same game this season. Eight and three all time uh, when the two homer in the same game. And then they won two or three against Minnesota. Otani hit his eleventh home run. Oh, and he threw six innings, gave up one run, and struck out nine. God. He is ridiculous. Got to be. St- he's still in the MVP talk. That's the crazy part about it. You can. Talk talk about Cy Young and, and MVP. Yes. Just it's nuts. crazy. Seattle lost two or three at Boston and lost two or three at Atlanta. Uh, big dumper, Cal Raleigh, <laughs> homered. <laughs> he homered from both sides of the plate. First catcher to ever do it at Fenway Park. So that's kind of cool. Bryce every time, Miller. Every time he came up to bat against the Braves, I, I kept thinking of uh, Cal from uh, uh, Talladega Knights. Right. I can't remember his name, but uh, as I just thought of that every time he came up to bat. You didn't yell out big dumper? I was, no, I was going to yell like shake and bake or, you know, <laughs> Cal, Cal Naughton. That's his Cal name. Naughton. Cal, That's right. Yeah. Uh, you missed Murph when we were at the uh, Redbirds game the other day uh, when the um, Lang was on the phone in a serious mm. phone conversation. My wife called me <laughs> like <laughs> to tell me something serious. You can go ahead. And then the umpires come walking out on the field and he puts the phone down and goes, boo. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of your right. Right. As a fan. Yeah. Well, great. also, cause we were sitting in the front row. The umpires walked about two feet from us. Like it was just the net between us and the umpires. And so they walked right past us and I was like, yeah, uh-huh, okay. Boo. <laughs> Okay, I got it. Yeah, couldn't, it couldn't help yourself, huh? Man? Yeah, yeah, it was good. We had some, we had some good, uh, we had some good conversation back there uh, with it was the a fun game. Yeah, with the guys on deck and and, and stuff. Uh, it was fun. Charlie Culberson spoke to us. He nodded. I was wearing a Braves hat. He gave me gave me a nod at one point. He had a home oh, run. Wow. He got he got called up. Yeah, he got called, called up, up two Braves. days later. Yeah, so journeyman Charlie Culberson. Yeah, go get him. Uh, Seattle, by the way, Bryce Miller, who you saw pitch uh, against the Braves. Uh, became the second pitcher since 1901 to go six or more innings and allow four or fewer hits in each of his first four career appearances, joining Wayne Simpson oh. in 1970. Yeah. And then the Oakland A's. Yeah. They announced a paid attendance of 2064 this week. It's pretty good for them. For, 2064, to- and most people said... I don't think there were 2064 people. There. Yeah. I wonder what, I wonder if they're on track to have the lowest average attendance in a season. It's got to be close. It's got to be close. I mean, Florida, Florida that includes Marlins, the COVID the year, year. The years the Florida Marlins had that horrible, horrible year. And nobody, yeah. that. They, might, they might be close to that. They were, they were horrible. Uh, it was the smallest home crowd since September of 1979 <laughs> for the A's. Wow. Total attendance for their three home games against Arizona, three home games against Arizona. Total attendance was 9,484. 12 inning game against the Diamondbacks was the first game this season to take more than four hours to complete. How about that? However, that was the first game this year over four hours. In the previous dozen years, there were over a thousand Mm. games over 
four hours. So what you're saying that the, the pitch clock is is helping, huh? Pitch clock's helping. Yes, no doubt. National League East, Braves are in first. Mets are in second. Mets, they're on, and the Mets are on fire. They uh, yep. split four against uh, Washington, won two or three against Tampa, and then they sweep three against Cleveland, all three by one run and one in the last at bat in all three games. And and um, they're doing and doing it with the youngins too. All those kids on the team. Yeah, mm. and Pete Alonso continues to hit. Got his 17th home run this season, most in baseball. Tied himself with Dave Kingman for the most home runs through 50 games in Mets history. Friday was the Mets' 46th game of the season. Justin Verlander against Tampa. He was rocked and got booed by the Mets fans. Wow. Now, Sunday was great. Eight innings pitch, one run. Uh, improved to two and two as the Mets beat the Cleveland Guardians. Miami Marlins, meanwhile, they swept three against Washington, then lost two or three at San Francisco. Sandy Alcantara is now one and five. Mm. Jazz Chisholm is out four to six weeks with turf toe. And the Marlins now 15 and two in one run games. Phillies, meanwhile, swept. They were swept in three games at San Francisco. And then they did win two out of three against the Cubs. Schwarber hit his 11th homer. You know, we talked about Kenley Jansen having 400 saves. Craig Kimbrell got his 399th save. Hmm. So he's on that list soon of 400 save guys. Craig Kimbrell. Are they just going to like do a cutoff point for like the Hall of Fame where you just, they're no longer going to allow these guys to get in because there's, there's some names in there that's getting these gaudy saves. And I don't know if they're Hall of Fame worthy. I think, uh, as we talked about last week, I think you have to reach Lee Smith. You got to get to that number to be even considered at this point i, I don't think 400 is a magic number anymore mm. i think it's the guys up top they're the magic number of getting there so but i don't know it'll be uh it'll be interesting when these guys get to that point uh philadelphia they they've lost five of their last seven and uh washington all right i got some washington notes the national split four against the mets the only two home runs in the whole series were hit by cj abrams of the nationals the last five players, all right, pay attention here. This one's this one's yeah. very odd. The last five players, 22 or younger, to hit multiple home runs to account for all the home runs hit by either team in a four-game series or greater. <laughs> wow. Those, no, those names are Babe Ruth, Mel Ott, Joe Medwick, Eddie Matthews, and C.J. Abrams That's now list. on that list as well. So congratulations to him. National League Central, Milwaukee Brewers are in first place. They lost four of six this week. Two or three to St. Louis, two or three to Tampa. Cardinals are now, or Pirates are in second place still. They split two at Detroit, lost two or three to Arizona, and lost 14 of 17 overall. The highlight of the Detroit series was Rich Hill, Dick Mountain, going four and three, six innings pitch, one hit, seven strikeouts, and a ground ball by Miguel Cabrera back to Rich Hill. The two racing to the bag at first base. 87 years old between the two guys running to first base. And StatCast had it very slow. Very yeah. slow <laughs> between those two. But Rich Hill's still pitching. He's four and three on this. I was about that, that was my next question. How, how is that man still pitching? Uh, Guile. Is that the only position where you could be like 50 years old? Moxie. Yeah, pitching. Well, Miguel Cabrera, he's 43. Yeah. DH, and DH, I guess, is a position. Yeah, you yeah, can you, can, you can get away with the DH. Yeah. But pitching, man. Yeah, and then the Cincinnati Reds are in last place. They're going to go good. Cardinals taking on the Reds this week. Oh, look, National you, League. Look, 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 at you, look, look at you getting dessert. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's about time the Cardinals get some breaks. Been a lot of bad luck for the Cardinals so far this season. It's what Ali Marmol said. The ball just hasn't bounced our way. What's their, record? What's their record since you met him? Since I'm well, when I met him, they lost seven straight, but, but they're on fire since. Um, so I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. It took a little while for your uh, influence to kick in. That's right. But once it did, it's on fire now. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe you just need to do another handshake fish. Just... I think so. I think I need to go see Ali and just to tell, ask him again, how are you doing? <laughs> see, see what his answer is now. Dodgers are in first place in the national league of West. They won two or three against the Minnesota and then lost three or four in St. Louis. Julio Urias uh, allowed four home runs in the third inning Thursday. According to Elias, that's tied for the most by a Dodger pitcher in a single inning in team history, joining Ben Wade, who allowed four home runs in the eighth inning. 
on May 28, 1954 at the New York Giants. Last time the Dodgers gave up seven home runs in a single game was when they were still the Brooklyn Dodgers. And then he went on the injured list with a hamstring strain. Tony Gonsolin, two and one after five scoreless innings. Kershaw dropped his second straight. Freddie Freeman hit his 300th home run. It was a grand slam. Mm. And the most homers hit by a Dodger, first 45 games of a season. Most homers hit by a Dodger, first 45 games of a season. Raul Mondesi had 17 back in 99. Max Muncy this year with uh, 15. Cody Bellinger once hit 15. Mookie Betts had 14. Gary Sheffield also on that list, having 14 home runs in the first 46 games. Dodgers are 16 and six in their last 22 games. Diamondbacks are somehow still in second place after winning two or three uh, against Oakland and two or three against Pittsburgh. Uh, Zach Gallen was crushed uh, in his last start in Pittsburgh. Arizona, however, has won seven of their last nine. The Giants are in third place. They swept three against Philly and won two or three against Miami. The Padres are in fourth place, seven and a half back, five games under 500. Got to be the most disappointing team. in the league. Have to be. Got to be. What a disaster. They like lost I, two or three to Kansas City. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that team. I, I can't call it. How, how about this nugget for you? I got two good Padres nuggets. Uh, no team in baseball history has ever batted below 200 with runners in scoring position over a full season. Hmm. The Padres are hitting 198 with runners in scoring position. Hmm. Wow. But they had a team meeting Tuesday night, so I guess all is going to be well. Yeah, it's going to turn it around. Machado's got a fracture in his hand. He's on the injured list. Blake Snell is one in six. Michael Walk is their best pitcher. Uh, he is now five and one had a no hitter going through six innings or through seven innings, uh, against Kansas city striking out 11. Then he went six scoreless against Boston. He's five and one on the year. Padres have lost 11 of 14. They have more sellouts at Petco park, 17 of them. than they have wins at Petco park. <laughs> they have 10. Brutal. If, they, if they keep this up, they're not going to have any more sellouts. Yeah. <laughs> Colorado Rockies. The only thing I have to ask about the Rockies: Do you like their those mountain uniforms? All right. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah. It's I right. think they're terrible. That color is hideous. It's like a hunter green. Yeah. That's white. the part I don't like. The, lo- the logo. The logo. I don't mind. The logo's okay. It's just the the color. Yeah. That's yeah. Awful. Agreed. Did you like the uh, armed forces hats that they wore this weekend? Yeah, I, I don't like. I, I never liked that. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even notice the Braves were wearing them, and I was at the game because <laughs> they're just like Hunter Green, and, and there's not a lot of like stuff on it. Otherwise, right. you know, the, the weird that. thing about it was everybody. I nobody really knew what was going on and why they were wearing them because in two weeks they're going to be having their Memorial Day weekend where they'll have. Yeah hats on for service people. So I don't think anybody really knew what this was about. And it was weird because some teams, they wore the hats and the the socks and the gloves. Some teams just wore the hats. Some teams had helmets. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, it was like it was all over the place. It was, I don't know, it was kind of weird. Yeah, I thought. Um, all right, our favorite players this week, Shohei Otani. He had three home runs this week. His batting average stayed the same. He's 287, 11 homers, 32 RBIs. Pitching, he's 5-1 and one with a 305 ERA. Became the fourth pitcher in baseball history with 500 strikeouts in his four, first 400 innings as a starter, joining Corbin Burns, Dylan Cease, and Jose Fernandez. Mm. Otani with 509 strikeouts. That's the second most of the group behind Corbin Burns. Also, Monday, nobody reached base more times than Shohei Otani on Monday. He reached Ooh. base five times. Oh. No one pitched more innings than Shohei Otani on Monday. <laughs> he pitched seven. No player in the live ball era has led to Major League Baseball in both categories on a day with at least a dozen games. Of course they haven't. Shohei did. Also, it's the third time this season Shohei's had three hits in a game as a starting pitcher, tied for the most in a season in the expansion era. He's the first player to reach base safely five times in a game he pitched since Mel Stoudemire in 1964. Mm. Just ridiculous what he's able to do. Wander Franco. Everybody else had a rough week of our guys. Wander was two for 21 
this week. Average dropped 27 points down to 277. Mm. Got seven homers and 23 RBIs, both unchanged from a week ago. Julio Rodriguez, just three of 23 this week, did have a couple of doubles, a couple of RBIs. His average went down 10 points to 204. Seven homers, 21 RBIs. And then Juan Soto, four of 20, a double homer and an RBI. He's hitting 248. That's down 14 points. Eight homers and 21 RBIs on the seat. He's got 21 RBIs on the season. I just decided this week with Juan Soto, I'm not paying you $30 million, dude, to walk. Mm. I'm paying you $30 million to drive people in. Yep. And he's not doing it because yeah. he's, he's, he's hunting for walks every time he's at the plate. Go out there and hit. Yeah, Ted that's... Williams used to do that. And not only does he hunt for walks, he's got that stupid little look and that, that, that little thing that he does after pitches. It's like, dude, get on base. Knock people in. Do something. Four of 20 last week. In my quest to bet the Cardinals in every game this year, I'm now 21 and 27 betting the Cardinals. Catching up. Look at you. I was two and five this week betting the Cardinals. So that's no. not good. Uh, 21 and 27. I was 18 and 13 at one point. So I am three and 14 in my last 17 bets on the Cardinals. I am so. still shocked that you're doing this because most b- baseball fans get spooked betting on their own team. Yeah, I would never bet on my team. That is the, like you. You got to be the most ballsy person I've ever met. Man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually scared betting on the Cardinals. Is yeah. usually my my big my big problem. This week the Cardinals will be in Cincinnati for four, woohoo! And then they'll uh, be in Cleveland for three. Uh, the Braves, you got three with the Dodgers and you four think, with the Phillies. You think Freddie, Fre- Freddie Freeman will cry again? It's in Atlanta. Uh, well, I don't know. He might be over it. He'll be sad. You know, it'll bring back some rough memories, but I think he'll survive. Uh, right. There was a woman sitting, the woman who was sitting in front of me was talking to me a lot during the game. And she said that, uh, she likes, uh, she prefers, uh, Matt Olson over Freddie because he's uh, better looking. Oh, uh, well, okay. 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 All right. yeah. Um, <laughs> Atlanta, they were, they got three with the Dodgers, four with Phillies Cubs got three with the Mets and three with Cincinnati. I mean, you know, it's, it's the, the, the worst of times and the best of times, I guess. <laughs> this <laughs> this week toronto another tough task as they go to tampa for four texas is in pittsburgh for three houston at milwaukee for three baltimore at the yankees uh baltimore at the yankees that's a good one uh for three games and then this weekend dodgers will visit tampa bay for three san diego's at the yankees for three texas in baltimore for three and toronto at minnesota for three some of the big series going on this week in major league baseball all right that's all i got fellas all right, I'm good. You got you got yeah. a winning streak going. That's what you got. Got a winning streak. Uh, got Cardinal base. That that's the Cardinal way, man. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this Cardinal way, uh, but it's a thing. And uh, Cardinals have won eleven of fourteen games just doing it the Cardinal way. Is yeah, it's, uh, it's, is how it's, they do it's, it. it. It's definitely a thing that needs to be put to sleep. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Infield Fly. Thanks for joining us here this week, uh, recapping the last week in baseball, looking ahead to this coming week in Major League Baseball. Enjoy the week, everyone. We'll talk to you again next week here on Infield Fly, right here on Grind City Media.